So we're going to have our first look at A2 level integration and we're starting with the functions of E and the natural log. So remember from before, if you're differentiating E to the X you just get E to the X and the more general form E to the AX plus B is A E to the AX plus B and you can use the chain rule to check that out but you've been doing that a lot so you should remember that one. So then working backwards from that, if we wanted to integrate e to the ax plus b, we would then have to multiply by a factor of a, which was the um, derivative of that e to the ax plus b there. So uh, instead of when you differentiate it, you times by the a, when you integrate, you divide by it, and then don't forget your plus c at the end. So some examples, we've got e to the 3x plus 1, that becomes a third e to the 3x plus 1. Now if you try to differentiate that answer, you can check that it does indeed go back to e to the 3x plus 1. Remember, you can always differentiate to check your integrations. And then if we have something like 8 e to the 2x, we'll get a half from that uh, power of 2x there, uh, multiplied by the 8 e to the 2x. And then you can simplify that to a 4 at the front. Now with the log function, you know that if you're trying to differentiate ln x, you get 1 over x. And then in the more general form, remember that if we've got ln of ax plus b, that becomes a over ax plus b, remember by the chain rule. Okay. So then if we put that in reverse, we can get this one first of all as our easiest way to look at it. And the way to recognize these ones is that the top of your fraction is the derivative of the bottom. If you've got that happening straight off, you can just go straight to your answer for that integral being ln of the bottom. And then if you've got uh, one at the top, you can just take out that factor of a that you see on, on the top version of that line. So it would be one over a ln ax plus b, and then plus your constant. Okay, so some examples. If you're doing one over three x, we want to get it in a form that's easy to integrate. So first of all, we can take out constants. Now, whenever you can do that on, a, on an integral to make things easier, you should. So we take out the third and then we've just got to integrate 1 over x and that just straight away goes to ln x. So we get a third ln x plus c. And then something like this, we're going to take out the 2 and that leaves us with 1 over 7x plus 1 to integrate. So that's the second line in the yellow. We're going to use that one there. So we take out that seventh and then it's ln 7x plus 1. And then, of course, just tidy it up. Okay, now what about this one? With this one, you should recognize that the top of this fraction is the derivative of the bottom. So we can just go straight to our answer being ln of the bottom. Now, when you're finding areas involving ln, there are a couple of things that you need to bear in mind. If you consider the graph of y equals 1 over x, and say you wanted to find this area here, you would go ahead and you'd integrate between minus 2 and minus 1, and you're doing 1 over x, so that integrates to ln x. But then what happens next? Because you can't do ln of minus 1 and ln of minus 2, they don't exist. What you can recognize, though, is that that area is the same as this one, since that graph is uh, symmetrical there around the um, origin. So that green area is the same as the purple area. So this would be the same as if we'd done ln x between 1 and 2. It just would be the negative of it, since it's under the x-axis. Now, the tidier way to do that is using a modulus. So we do ln of the modulus of x, and then we'll get our answer. And you can see it comes to a minus 0 0.693. The minus is because it's under the x-axis, which you're used to recognizing already. And then another note, this graph has a discontinuity at x equals zero. It's called a discontinuous graph because there's a break in it, or in this case, it's an asymptote. Um, so you can't integrate across that asymptote. You can't integrate um, with the zero in the middle of your limits. 
um, it just isn't defined for that. So if you're going to find an area, your limits must be either both positive or both negative. Okay, which brings us to our joke. So there were sine x, cos x and e to the x all went to a party. And sine x and cos x were having a great time, getting mixed in there, having lots of fun. And they noticed e to the x was off sitting by himself in the corner. They went over and they tried to persuade him to come and join in the fun. And uh, he was looking pretty lonely and he just replied to them, you know, I, I keep trying, but every time I try to integrate, I just end up with myself. <laughs>